Um, so for our first reader for tonight, I'd like to introduce you to Bob Ayers. He's the author of Shadow, Wings, uh, Shadow of Wings, a chapbook published by Main Street Rag Press. Ayers has published poems in Laurel Review, Marlboro Review, and Southwestern American Literature, among other magazines. His anthology publications include The Foray Reader 2, Is This Man Forever, Is This Forever or What, and Urban Nature. He was the winner of the 2013 Literal Press Broadside Contest, and he received his MFA from the Warren Wilson MFA program for writers. He's a native of San Antonio, but has lived in Austin since 1985. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Malvern, for uh, hosting us tonight. How great is it to have an independent bookstore in Austin focused on the literary? <laughs> so I've recently read Daniel Wolf's new book, Naming of the Birds, and I'm a fan, and I'm really looking forward uh, to hearing Daniel read tonight, and I'm looking forward to reading some poems uh, to you all too. Because of the title of his book, and because I've always wanted to, an excuse to do this, I thought I would read all together uh, poems with bird references. We are, after all, not only in National Poetry Month, but the very peak of the spring migration, at least in Texas. And uh, most of these are Texas poems, but I will begin with a new poem uh, that was inspired by a visit to the North Carolina coast over Christmas time this year. It's dangerous to read new poems because um, you're still kind of infatuated with them and then never end up to be you know, quite as good later on as you. <laughs> so why do you begin a reading with them? <laughs> because you're infatuated with them. Here's the point. Midwinter. The loon I'd seen through binoculars a hundred yards offshore in winter plumage, alone, adrift, hemisphere of wind above, hemisphere of brine below, cold, has surfaced just feet from the beach where I stand on my hemisphere of sand, in my hemisphere of wind, sand swirling in the wind. It's come out of curiosity, perhaps, or for company. We take each other in just a few yards between us now, edge of shore and sea, a barrier Either one could cross awkwardly, but no, the other won't. Content to share this moment, spare and cold, this proximity, silent, sun low on the horizon, masked. The loon dives, resurfaces a little farther down the beach. Again, I turn and walk the other way, feeling less apart, more a part of this world's 10,000 things, not the least of which is a common loon, wearing all the colors of a clotted winter sky. Okay, so... <laughs> So the, these next poems are, will continue this progression from winter kind of through breeding season. That's kind of the idea. And we're back to Texas birds. And this poem is called The Whole Shebang. There's a reference uh, to Gerard, who you might suspect would be Gerard Manley Hopkins, and also uh, a, a, a reference to his poem, Pied Beauty. The Whole Shebang, sun's up, at least it wants to be, fog hanging on, shining nevertheless on the mountains, tippity-top. 
The pond's unruffled surface all silvery gray. Look, a wee sunny spot, reflected must be, though I don't see how. Lots, I don't know. No duck, no grebe, no heron, no privacy either. Nutria, feral goats and feral hogs, psycho deer and fallow deer, black buck antelope, and elephants. I'm just kidding about the elephants. <laughs> but everything else released, roaming, home homing on the range, except for the buffalo, befuddled, bam, bluzzled, blam, blasted away. You just gotta love the lone bird chirping, the Phoebe pumping its tail on a branch in the Spanish oak, color drained from the leaves, half of them still stuck on the tree, ball moss cluttering up the branches, not a true parasite though, not like mistletoe or deer ticks or seed ticks ever had those. Ho ho ho, real sunshine sliding down the slopes, the whole valley soaking up the golden goods, but winter light even so, I've been outside and it's cold, better wear your woolies. <coughs> New houses on the hilltops far, far away. Metal roofs like shards of broken mirrors flashing more bad news. This whole country shrinking up. But there's a grieve after all, a pied bill. Most everything is pied, I mean. Though it's not all pretty, as Gerard well knew. Rotten deck planks, for example, though from a distance they look just fine. But some of it, praise God, is. Like the dapply sun in shade on the wall and the red, red, bushy blue stem along the edge of the pond. And how about them gobbling gobblers strutting up the hill just now? Region rushes home, changing subjects here, dormant, though their gradual, eventual, inevitable dominion of the whole affair goes largely unchallenged by yours truly who may need to poison the whole shebang. Just you can't eat the fish for a while. And try telling that to His Highness, the double-crested cormorant. But now, nearly officially day, time to get my butt off this sofa, do something. <laughs> So here are a few uh, from <coughs> Shadow of Wings, and um, moving into the year. Helps to know in this poem that uh, Purple Martins are among our earlier uh, migrants in this part of the world, spring migrants. Human X. I'm flat on my back on the big rock. None of the trees in periphery have budded their thousand thin fingers, like ancient diagrams of the body, each reaching toward its own ending. I feel a sudden sadness that winter is done, that the inner order of things must be hidden by the leafy barrage, morning clotted with song. Then a purple martin swoops by, and oddly, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Thank you. Downpour. Had you come with me this morning, walking the pecan bottom along the creek, then the ridge upstream from where it bends, the sky scrubbed clean by last night's unpredicted storm. You would have seen the turkey hen, disheveled, threading her brood between through patches of blue stem, blooming broom weed, and perched on the upended cedar stump, a painted bunting, bright promise from a distant land, besotted with sunshine and song. David's music and yeah, <laughs> great to have poetry and uh, where do you go? <laughs> Thank you. Great to have music yeah. and songs. So this poem is titled Half, as in one's half. 
Where's the nest, I wondered, scouring the branches of a Spanish oak? What bird lay its egg with a shell the color of a cloudless summer sky? Where's the fledgling begging, mouth agape and quivering wings? Or the ants, if that's what happened? I take the shell off my fingertip and set it at your place first thing. So moving on past breeding season into late summer, and what would Austin be without grackles? <laughs> Molt of the great tail grackle. Sands iridescent sheen, sands swashbuckle and swagger, all the showbiz, all the shimmy and strut, all the whistles, clicks and clucks, all gone. Blotched birds wallow in the dust or poke around the yard in shoddy underwear. <laughs> Even the dogs look the other way. <laughs> So if you know anything about bird watchers and birding, you know that uh, we keep lists. <laughs> so the list for all the birds you've seen on one outing is your trip list. Okay. I just thought someone might want to volunteer. <laughs> trip list. We saw some birds we'd heard but hadn't seen. We heard some birds we'd seen but hadn't heard. We saw and heard a slew of birds we'd neither heard nor seen. We neither heard nor saw a bunch of birds we thought we would. We heard a bird that sounded really weird. We saw a bird beside the road, poor Chanticleer. We heard and saw some birds we just as soon were dead. We neither saw nor heard that bird with the diagnostic turd. Okay, so that's a shitty way to end a point. You know, there is at least one bird I can identify you know, <laughs> by its scat. <laughs> a bird, a turkey, you know, turkey. Turkey's a good problem. Anyway. So I'm going to end with uh, two poems, staying in the lighter vein. And I guess it was when I first read Robert Bly that I thought, how cool would it be to have a poem where the title is way longer than the poem itself? <laughs> and so this is a pair of, of those. And each of these poems, includes um, a pickup truck, a cowboy, and an eagle. In one case, the eagle is a crested caracara, uh, which is, um, uh, is the bird on the uh, Mexican flag, and which uh, ranchers in South Texas would call the Mexican eagle. So anyway, more than maybe you needed to know about that. OK. So here's the title. A cowboy driving a red, long bed, one-ton crew cab Shelby, Chevy Silverado to the crested Caracara, flipping cow patties on the flat above Barton Creek. <laughs> <laughs> cowboy speaking. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, compañero. I bet you that's some goddamn sure enough tasty grub. <laughs> okay, so now the uh, bird gets its turn, right? <laughs> a golden eagle atop a roadkill cottontail on FM 3078 to the driver of a red long bed one ton <laughs> crew cab show Chevy Silverado. Let's have that one ton. Crew cab, Chevy Silverado. I think they have poets working at <laughs> Chevrolet. Whoa, cowboy. Slow that honking rig way down, see who play. My goddamn rabbit. My goddamn road. 